In this video, we're going to discuss the non-constant growth stock model and consider, in particular, a below normal growth stock. In our example, we're going to consider a stock initially paying a dividend of $3, but that dividend is going to decrease for several years as the economy enters a recession and our company is not doing well. So its uh, dividend is going to decrease by 1% every year for three years, then be stagnant for two years, and then recover relatively quickly at a five-year growth rate. We are given the required rate of return of the stock will stay at 11, but the combination of dividend yield and capital gains yield will change throughout the life of the stock. In general, the dividend discount model values or gives the value for a stock at time zero of P0 right after a dividend D0 is paid, and that is based on the dividend one year from now divided by 1 plus RS, and the dividend two years from now divided by the dividend 1 plus RS squared, the dividend three years from now divided by the dividend 1 plus RS cubed, then a dividend in four years divided by 1 plus RS to the fourth. In general, this would go on forever in the limited circumstance where each of these dividends grows at a constant rate, whether positive or negative, then this equation reduces to the constant growth stock model, P0 equals D1 over RS minus G. And again, this only works if D1 is D0 times 1 plus G constant, D2 equals D1 times 1 plus G constant, etc. In our circumstance, we're going to say these first dividends change at a non-constant rate, but then after year five, they grow at a constant rate. So we will value our stock P0 right after the dividend D0 here was paid as D1 over 1 plus RS, D2 over 1 plus RS squared, etc., up through D5 over 1 plus RS to the fifth, but then it will become a constant growth stock after that, and we will value that at P5. So we could say, well, we just got a dividend D5 and then we sold the stock for P5 when it became a constant growth stock. And the value P5 is going to be D6 over RS minus G constant. RS is given at 11, G constant here is five. The next step in this process is we have to calculate all of these dividends and then we'll have to calculate P5. So if D0 is $3, D1, since we have a shrinking company, is going to be $3 times, right here, 1 plus negative 0.01, our 0.99 gives us $2.97. And then D2 is going to be 2.97 times 1 plus a negative 0 0.01, or 0.99, are 2.94, and D3 again will be uh, 2.94 times 0.99 times equals 2.91. Then we have no growth for two years, so we stay at 2.91, and then we have a quick recovery, and we start growing at 5%, so D6 is 2.91 times 1.05, or 3.06. Now we have D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, and for P5, we have D6. So our terminal value, after we get a constant growth rate stock, P5 will be this D6 over RS minus G constant. RS is 11, G constant is 5%. So we have 0.11 minus 0.05 gives us 0.06 and we end up with $3 divided by 0.06 gives us a terminal value of $50.94. We now have all of our dividends and our terminal value, but we have to find the present value of them. The present value of the dividend D1 is going to equal D1 of 2.97 divided by 1 plus RS, our 1.11, so we have here F11 of 2.97 divided by 1 plus J4, 1.11 taken to the first power, gives us 
$2.68 is this value here. The next value here is going to be 2.94 divided by 1.11 squared, or 2.39. The next value here is 2.91 divided by 1.11 cubed, or 2.13. And the next one is going to be 2.91 divided by 1.11 to the fourth, or 1.92, followed by, now, d5 here, 2.91 divided by 1.11 to the fifth, or 1.73. We now have the present value of all the dividends, and we need the present value of the terminal value, p5. So our terminal value, P5, is the 5094. We need to now take the 5094, P5, divided by 1.11 to the fifth. We get F18, 5094, divided by 1.11 to the fifth as our terminal value. We now sum all of these values, all the dividends, are the present value of all the dividends plus the present value of the terminal value, G11 through G18, and get our stock price is $41.07. Note that most of the stock price, in this case 74%, is based on the terminal value. So what happens to the stock long term influences things a lot more than the fact we're in a mild recession now. So 30 divided by 50 gives us around the 74%. The stock is going to be very dependent on this long-term growth rate. It's also going to be very dependent on the required rate of return. And of course, this could be dependent on things like interest rates. As the Fed raises interest rates, the required rate of return, RS, can go up, and then P0 can go down, which is happening today in 2022. It is also good to study what happens to the dividend yield and the capital gains yield as growth rate changes. We know that in the final year, the growth rate is going to equal the capital gains yield. This equation right here, the um, required rate of return equals dividend yield plus capital gains yield, will always equal the dividend next year over the current stock price, but the capital gains yield only becomes the growth rate when you have a constant growth stock. Before that, in general, it's just gonna be the change in the stock price over the initial stock price. So eventually it's gonna converge here to our 5% or constant growth rate. But before that, in this example, it will be below that since we have a subnormal growth stock. So in our initial year, we can say that the dividend yield will equal next year's dividend, F11, right here of 2.97 divided by the current stock price, G20, of 0.0723. Well, we know the dividend yield plus the capital gains yield has to equal the required rate of return at 11, so the capital gains yield will equal 11 minus the 7.23, or 0.0377. And then in the final year, again, we know the capital gains yield will equal the growth rate, the growth rate plus the dividend yield has to equal the required rate of return, so the dividend yield will have to equal 11 minus 0.05 or 6. In our example, our company is trying to keep its dividend payment, so during a recession it grows less but has a high dividend, and then gradually as they come out of the recession, the dividend yield goes down and the capital gain yield goes up. So this is a calculation based on a stock that pays dividends. Not all stocks pay dividends. If our stock did not pay a dividend, then you would have to stick in a bunch of zeros. And the way you would have to engage in this model is you would have to say um, the first few dividends are all zeros. And then later on, you would add in dividends in five to 10 years when the stock would hopefully be paying them. This might be the situation here if we have a company that's in bad enough shape, it stops dividends, but then it recovers and starts paying them later. 
companies do not like to do that because people invest in companies based on their dividend. If they want growth, they invest in a company that does not pay dividends and they expect it to stay that way and get a capital gains. But if they're retired and they want a current income, they would invest in a stock with a current dividend and perhaps they would use that to live off of. And this choice of stocks based on the type of dividends they pay is called the clientele effect. And if you suddenly change your dividend, like when IBM drastically cut its, that tends to make your investors rather unhappy. And then, of course, they sold IBM. I thank you for watching this video.